Hey Gearheads, Jeff with Gear Report. I'm here at Diamondback Firearms in Cocoa, Florida. We just had a tour of the facility. You're gonna to wanna to check our various video platforms to find that tour that's gonna to post soon. Now we've stepped back in the conference room to have a chat about the background of the company. So Kaylee and Cody are here. They're gonna get us up to speed on Diamondback Firearms, Diamondback America. Hey, help clear this up for us, please. Kaylee, I'm the marketing director for Diamondback America. We have six different companies here, uh, starting in 1989 with Airboats, okay. where we originally uh, started manufacturing airboats, hulls, riggings, the whole nine. And then many years after that, we started with Towers, where we build all OEM T tops, helm seats, towers, folding towers, stagnant towers um, for a large amount of boat manufacturers. Then we started the CNC company because uh, we were making firearms parts for other companies. I mean, we were also making the airboat parts. We were making part. airboat parts. Um, and so then, like you said earlier, we were like, why don't we make firearms? So then firearms opened. After that, we had barrels so that we could make barrels for all of the rifles. And then now just recently within the past six months we've opened uh dbi which will be our coding company nice yeah and i mean the beauty of all that is that's what makes diamondback america when we take all these companies and put them as a whole right. that's diamondback america right. so like you know her job title is you know kaylee she works for diamondback america because mm -hmm. she does a lot of things but i'm just firearms it's great having like a small family ran business but we're producing like big company you know quality and quantity of product sure i would say that every you know the culture here too everyone is a team player so uh, there are things that our engineering team is doing for airboats or marine or you know any of the other companies so anything that you know coincides or we can all work together and make whichever company needs something to happen happen we're all doing it. And we're at dimeback firearms we got some firearms in front of us and let's kind of see what made Diamondback Firearms, and it was the airboats. You know, I mean, we had world-class boats, and when you make something that's world-class and you're used to getting, you know, first prize at every boat show, mm -hmm. you're used to that, you know, it's hard for that not to follow you through the line of your other companies. Right. So if you're producing a great boat, you, uh, you wouldn't expect anything less if you're making a firearm right. or if you're making a tower part. Business et ethics follow you down the line. So coming out with firearms, I mean, everybody has their roller coasters. Um, starting out as a brand new firearm company, yeah, we had our hiccups. You know, we had some guns that some people didn't didn't like. I mean, we had the DB9, right? It's smallest, lightest strike of fire nine on the market, right? This thing you can conceal anywhere. Well, coming out with this is very, it was very ammo picky. Mm -hmm. um, you either loved it or you hated it. Yeah, that that was your two people. There was no, <laughs> ah, I kind of like it. It was you loved it or you hated it. So, okay, it's still that way. Yeah, it's but <laughs> I mean, over time, you know, we made changes to it. We heard what the customers were saying and we, you know, we changed a few things on it and improved it. So now our fourth gen has a pinky extension. Mm -hmm. It has a slide stop, mm -hmm. um, different extractors. We also have Glock style sights on it now because everybody oh, okay. didn't like that they couldn't run aftermarket sights. And we all know there's a million Glock sights out oh, there. Yeah. So let's keep it simple. Right, and that's, that's really what we do with all our firearms is we're not trying to 100% reinvent the wheel, but we're trying to give you a quality product that's affordable. So, I mean, I can get into the details is, oh, we got 7075 upper, um, we do hard code and we all do that. Yeah. You know I mean? that If, you don't, if you're not getting an AR in this time frame with that kind of stuff, it's a bad deal. It's a bad deal. It's a, it's a very bad deal. So what we're trying to do is basically come out with some new stuff, like this is our forging. Now, when you look at it, you may think, all right, y'all got to bill it lower. No, we finally just invested in having our own forging. It gives you that billet look, no need for extended uh, trigger guards. It's already built on there for you. And I mean, this is our higher end package. So, I mean, we have diamond, we have our black gold, and we have our carbon series. Okay. And basically your carbon series is our base model, all right? We got our base model and then it goes up to black gold, which is, has a few more perks to it. Mm -hmm. And then we go to our diamond series and then you, you either get a diamond with sights or you get a diamond without sights. But I mean, we all know what makes a diamond, 
right? You got to have carbon, you got to have the base, and then tried and true, pressure, going through everything, you start having a nicer product. And so that's how we came up with the diamond. And you're going to get the drop-in triggers, um, the nicer hand guards, anti, anti-rotation hand guards, so you don't have to worry about it coming loose. Got it. I mean, seeing Diamondback, the way that we transformed, because it was, I mean, we... I mean, we are constantly uphill, and we have not stopped. It is, we bought a bigger building because we were running out of room, and we're like, we're never going to steal this. Mm-hmm. Right. And here we are, hey, we're running out of room. <laughs> Busting at the seams. And, <laughs> and I mean, at the end of the day, it's the customers that we thank. You sure. know what I mean? It's all about sure. them. And Yeah, we wouldn't be able to do it without it. It's great. And I mean, y'all coming out here, I mean, that's just, you know, that just shows you something. That, you know, we got, you know, a reputable company like this sitting here at Dimeback Firearms talking to us. And if you would have asked that um, six years ago, if that would happen, we probably would have said no. Mm-hmm. Actually, just just um, probably about 20 minutes ago, uh, our owner sent a group text telling us that our second largest distributor told us that we are second on their on order right now under right. block. So yeah. cannot be mad about that. Definitely never thought we would, you know, be at that place where people are wanting our products and, you know, are coming after us. We're not, you know, yeah. we try to keep it humble and remember who we are and where we came from. And that shines through everything that we do in every company that we do. Along with us constantly moving forward, that's all we're working on. Everybody was used to us just building ARs and uh, the two pistols that we had. So now we're, we're starting to branch off and spread our wings a little more, and we have the new mm-hmm. 5.7. Yeah. Right? The internet's been going crazy about it. Uh, we've been making some changes to it. Um, the first run that we had didn't have a slide stop, didn't have last yeah. round hold open. So that was a no-brainer. We added that. Um, Gotta go grab it real quick. Yeah, because I think the one we saw at SHOT Show was missing some of those, right? Yeah, yes, sir. And unfortunately, during the, the COVID-19 uh, deal, it gave us some... Uh, it gave us some time to actually um, make some changes. Right. Uh, we have uh, adjustable pistons now. You know what I mean? Uh, last round hold open. Uh, and y'all saw from the videos before, ambidextrous uh, charging handle, pull it out, add it to the other side. Right. So, I mean, it's, it's things like this that you're going to see more of from Diamondback in the future. And, I mean, we're not going to slow down. Nope. Nice. Yeah, I remember, it, what, four years ago when you first came into the marketing yeah. role and we had the initial discussions about, yeah, hey, we've got this new uh, AR-15, AR-10, and it, it, it was one of these, yeah, well, we're just getting into this mm-hmm. and we're, we're kind of easing in and we're not sure how we're going to move forward with yeah. it. And now, boom, four years later, yeah. you know, three different product lines fast. plus, you know, new stuff coming out. Mm-hmm. So it's really been fun to get a little insight, a little insight a few years ago into the company and gradually get to know you guys a little bit better. But the initial discussion was, you know, hey, what's special about your AR? What makes your brand different? Sure. Well, you know, we're just getting into it was yeah. kind of what yeah. I heard. It's kind of a standard AR. And now I'm looking at different uh, levels you know, having three different tiers, basically. Mm -hmm. And as a brand, I'm I'm hearing more of a brand voice, a brand identity, whereas you were trying to figure out who you were going to be. We were definitely, when I first started talking to you, definitely still trying to figure out who we were, where we were gonna be, where our place in the market was gonna be. Um, And like you said, it's happened so fast, and I think we're really figuring it out now. And, uh, you know, Cody and I spent a lot of time researching and uh, you know looking at what everyone is doing and so that we can come up with something that is of just as much value um, but can still give it to an affordable price and we can still put our spin on it it can look at like something that we're proud you know to be selling Um, so I really think that this past year when we you know added all three of these lines we really hit it out of the park with that um, it was it was really to me what we had been lacking as a brand um, you know we we had the base model that we had that one you know on lock and you know we had that mid-level version but adding this third uh, you know, diamond level has really, I think, going to set us over the edge because you have all three of these buyers mm-hmm. in the market. You know, all Absolutely. three of these people want these guns just as much as the other. So the fact that we're able now to offer to all three of them, I think, is, yeah. you know, only going to be more beneficial to us. Yeah, now, if you step back a little bit and see how much our AR, our original AR that we ever made, how much it used to sell for. It used to sell for $1,200, mm-hmm. right? 
and we kind of changed the market. Every every AR out there was not less than twelve hundred dollars. Mm-hmm. Like you were paying big money for AR. Well, when we started making them, it's like where are they getting this money from? We're building one a lot cheaper. Yeah. Are they really, you know, biting off that much profit? So we started playing around with stuff, and that's our main goal is to give something, you know, quality product, affordable price, and you're, I mean, giving the customer something they need, something yeah. they want that they can afford. What good is it if you have this expensive gun sitting here that nobody can afford to buy? Right. Yeah. It does nothing. When people ask, you know, about why is it cheaper than mm-hmm. other guns out right. there? So the heart of the gun, we're not messing with the heart of the gun. We still bolt, barrel, everything. We're not messing with that. But when, say we change the handguard a little bit, right? Less machine time in the handguard means mm-hmm. I can charge a little less for that handguard. Right. So not everybody needs all that you know, M-lock space. Yeah. You may be a guy in the backfield on your tractor shooting a coyote. You know what mm-hmm. I mean? Uh, so you may want just a regular plain Jane handguard. Right. Um, you're somebody that goes out there and you're actually buying it for your duty use. You're going to want something with the anti-rotation handguard. You're going to want to make sure that you have that extra little bit uh, safety feature that your handguard won't come loose because of mm-hmm. the round count you're putting through. You know, though, I really don't feel like you're losing anything, even going with the base model. Like, it's still a pretty rail. It still has plenty of M-lock space. It's still sufficing what you need it to do. So I feel like we really tried not to give up anything in Mm -hmm. order to make it cheaper. Just find the right parts that, you know, could provide a reasonable price. And that's what separates the diamond from the black gold. If you can see our black gold has a plastic grip. Our diamond is going to come with a rubberized grip, and um, we're using all our furniture from Magpul. I mean, minus the pistol braces and stuff like that. Gearhead tail uh, tail hook has been great to us. Yeah, they really right. have. Um, we really like it. Um, no, you don't have to worry about losing Velcro. And I'm not dogging anybody that uses Velcro or anything like that. It's just we found this to be a very good one, and our customers like it. Mm-hmm. Right. I mean, I'm pretty, I'm pretty outspoken that I like that. Yeah. And while I like some of the people at the other companies, and I love sticking it in the eye of the ATF for their stupid rules and finding ways to work around them. I don't find some of the other types as functional, but yeah, they have a place in the market. People want to buy them. They do. Yeah. There's other places you can go to learn more about Dimebag Firearms. I mean, Mm -hmm. you know, dimebagfirearms.com. We're on Facebook, Mm -hmm. you know, or Instagram, and we're constantly bringing new people into our family. So, that's what we're known for is we want people to be part of the Diamondback family. So even if you have somebody else's gun and you're running our rail on it and take pictures, send it to us. That's what we mm-hmm. love. We love yeah. flooding the internet with fun stuff, shooting. I mean, we all are in the, the shooting sport business. I mean, we get people that send pictures all the time of a gun that's not even ours and we'll still share it. Yeah. You know what I mean? Thanks well, for being part of the Diamondback yeah, and I family. Think, I think that's talking about the, uh, the culture here, I feel like we're still so small town, hometown mm-hmm. people that it's still very surreal for us. Uh, you know, when we, when we have customers coming or you know, sending us pictures or even coming in or writing in or calling mm-hmm. in or whatever and saying how happy they are and how much they want to get this mm-hmm. gun or they've been waiting to get this one. And, you know, it is just very hard for us to believe that we're producing this product mm-hmm. that is in, mm-hmm. you know, all over the world mm-hmm. now. Yeah. yeah. I and mean, you know how much easier it is to come to work knowing that there was this kid that just killed his first hog, right? And I still love this. Yeah, yeah. So this kid shot his first hog, and they posted pictures of it. And we, we sent him all kinds of stuff. It was a cool <laughs> thing, you know, yeah. seeing that and him being so proud. And that makes us build a better product yes. in my eyes. Yeah. And when I see, you know, our customers enjoying it, you know, a kid killing his first deer, respecting the firearms, you know, parents. That's the biggest thing is I love seeing the parents actually teaching their kids gun safety. Yeah. Right. Because that's something that needs to be brought back. I mean, we go to shows and we see <laughs> that there's a lot of parents that need to teach their kids yeah. gun safety. Um, but seeing that is, that's one of my It is. It definitely is what drives us, seeing how much, nice. you know, people are enjoying the product that we're, we're shipping. And I mean, it's not even just firearms. That, uh, that uh, welder, what was she, like 13, 12? Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. You she know, wanted to she meet the girl welder at, uh, at Airboats. She wants nice. to come here yeah. and weld one day. Yeah. Yeah. That's, that's, that's cool. That's what, yeah. that's that's what Diamond Bike's about. And right. then our secondary is to build guns. Mm-hmm. All right. We well, have fun doing all of it. I really appreciate sharing some of the story of, of the family of brands, of the, the family in general. We're going to break down what's on the table here and do some additional videos 
and kind of hone in on a few of these products with some more specifics. So be sure to check for those. Um, until then, we'll see you at the range. Let us know if you have any questions in the comments. A big thanks to our patrons for helping us bring you more unbiased, hands-on reviews. Thank you very much, and we'll see you at the range. Thank you.